in this lecture we're going to see how we're going to find out oxidation states of unknown elements we've previously discussed what the oxidation states of some of the elements are and based on that calculation uh, based on that knowledge we are going to find out the oxidation states of other elements whose oxidation states is otherwise unknown now uh, I'll do an example for you. For example, if we have HNO3, which is uh, nitric acid. Now, in nitric acid, you're sure of what the oxidation state of hydrogen is. It's plus one over here. The oxidation state of oxygen, whenever it's combined, combined and there, uh, except with fluorine, uh, since there is no fluorine, the oxidation state of oxygen is going to be minus two over here. The unknown oxidation state, therefore, is nitrogen, whose oxidation state is not known a priori. So, uh, we have the oxidation states of two of the elements and we have an unknown oxidation state of nitrogen. Now, based, if you look at this molecule, the net charge on this molecule is zero. So, what that means is that the individual charges must add up together to, to and should equal zero. So, the charge of hydrogen is plus one. The charge on nitrogen is X and there's only one. The charge on uh, oxygen is minus two and there are three oxygen in this molecule. Now, if we add up all the charges, the, the net charge must equal zero because HNO3 has no charge. So based on this, we can calculate this and uh, which in the value of X comes out to be uh, minus six would go over there. It would become plus six and minus one would be Five. So the value of X is 5. So the oxidation state of nitrogen in this case is 5. So the nitrogen has an oxidation state of plus 5 in this molecule. Uh, let's take another example. Let's think of uh, CO2. Now in CO2 again, the oxidation state of carbon over here is unknown. So that would be taken as X. The oxidation state of oxygen is known. It's minus 2 in this case. And uh, again, we apply the same rule. The individual oxidation states must all add up to the net charge on this molecule, which is zero again. So let's take the oxidation state of carbon, which is X. And the oxidation state of oxygen is minus two. And since there are two of them, so it's minus two into two. And that should add up to zero again. And X in this case comes out to be plus four, which is the oxidation state of carbon in this molecule. Let's take a, a slightly more complicated molecule. Let's take, uh, let's think of HClO3. Now, this is slightly more complicated. Uh, you have, you already have hydrogen whose oxidation state is plus one. Now, chlorine would be minus one except when it is bonded with oxygen. But over here, it is bonded with oxygen, so it is in minus one. So we don't know what the oxidation state of chlorine is. Let's take that as X. And since oxygen was more electronegative than chlorine, so oxidation is going to retain its oxidation state of minus two. So oxygen would be minus two. So again, the net charge on the entire molecule is zero. So the individual charges must add up to zero. So you have plus one. That's the oxidation state of hydrogen and chlorine would have an oxidation state of X and uh, oxygen would have an oxidation state of minus two and there are three of them. So we multiplied by three and the total charge must add up to zero. And in this case, X comes out to be five. So chlorine has an oxidation state of plus five. Unlike otherwise, it would be minus one but since it is bonded with oxygen so the oxidation state of chlorine had to be calculated uh, another molecule can be taken for example if we have n cl3 now this one is an interesting uh, molecule we we can uh, use our understanding of electronegativity to find out uh, the oxidation states of uh, both the elements in this now chlorine would be minus one but since it is bonded with nitrogen, which is an even more electronegative element. So if we draw the structure of NCl3, uh, there would be two bond electrons being shared by nitrogen and chlorine over here. And then they'll be making three bonds, three individual bonds. So this is chlorine again, and you have a lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen. Now, since nitrogen is a more electronegative element, so all these electrons are going to reside closer 
to nitrogen. So they'll be closer to nitrogen and in a way nitrogen would have gained three electrons from all of these chlorines. So nitrogen would be minus three in this case. And since chlorine, each of the chlorine atom, the lone pair is, li is lying closer to, the bonding pair is lying closer to nitrogen. So chlorine would lose one of its electrons to nitrogen. So chlorines, all the chlorines in this case would be plus one again. So this is one thing that we have actually found the oxidation state based on the electronegativity concept. Uh, let's think of ions now. For example, you have NH4 and the net charge on this ion is plus 1. Now again, we know the oxidation state of hydrogen in this case, which is plus 1. The oxidation state of nitrogen, that's not given, it's unknown, so that is X. The individual oxidation states must add up to the total charge, which is plus 1 in this case. So the oxidation state of nitrogen is X and the oxidation state of hydrogen is plus 1. And since there are 4 of them in this molecule, so it would be plus 1 into 4 and that should equal plus 1, which is the net charge on the ion, ammonium ion. X in this case comes out to be minus 3, which is the oxidation state of nitrogen in this molecule. Let's think of another ion, a more complicated ion. Let's think of uh, Cr2O7 minus 2 or the dichromate ion. Now, in this case, chromium is a transition metal, so we don't know the oxidation states of transition metals. They need to be estimated. So chromium would be, it would be X over here. The oxidation state of chromium would be X. The oxidation state of oxygen is already known, which is minus 2. So, and the total charge on the ion is minus 2. So the, so the individual charges must all add up to minus 2. Since there are two chromiums, so oxidation state of chromium is 2, but that would be multiplied by 2 because there are two of them. The oxidation state of oxygen is known, which is minus 2, but that would be multiplied by 7 because there are 7 oxygens over here and the total charge must equal minus 2. And if we calculate this, 2x comes out to be 2x comes out to be equal to 12 and x would be equal to plus 6. So the oxidation state of chromium in this molecule is plus 6.